Welcome back. On to health matters now. Pregnancy and childbirth are often joyous occasions, but complications can arise, posing risks to the well-being of a woman, fetus and a newborn. Now, swift and appropriate care is crucial to prevent disability or death in such cases. Now, against this backdrop, midwifery plays a pivotal role in ensuring that women, their babies and families receive timely and proper care. Now, joining us to delve into this topic is Annalois Penduka, advanced midwife and new, new, new natal uh, care specialist and Imana board member as well. We're also joined by Grace Thomas, who is the director of the World Health Organization Collaboration Center of Midwifery Development at Cardiff University. Ladies, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Right, Such an start, honor to be here. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Uh, let's start with you, Ms. Penduka. Could you perhaps enlighten us on uh, the vital role that midwives play uh, in communities and how frequently do families avail themselves of wife, uh, midwifery services in Namibia? Um, so we are very lucky in Namibia that our government has actually worked together, for instance, with Imana and with all the midwives in Namibia. Currently, we, we know that Every year, more than 290,000 women die from pregnancy and childbirth-related complications, and more than 5.5 .5 million stillbirths and neonatal deaths occur globally. Mm -hmm. And as it stands, uh, we have oh, over 99 of these deaths occur in low- to middle-income countries. Here in Namibia, we are fortunate that families actually choose to come and actually have care from uh, from our health sector. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have our interpartum and antipartum guidelines that have just noted that 94% of women actually give birth in our health facilities, which means that a lot of work um, has been put uh, by the government and uh, by NGOs that are working in collaboration uh, with uh, all these non-government organizational uh, situations like like we're doing right now uh, with this workshop. So yeah, I, I must say that uh, families trust midwives in Namibia and they reach out and they come to our health facilities. Very well. Uh, now, now talking about the workshop that, uh, that actually was held earlier today on midwifery leadership, could you share some of the key topics that were covered during the workshop? Well, I'm really delighted to say that um, we have a very packed two-day workshop on um, midwifery leadership. And this is very much a collaboration between the University of Namibia, between IMANA, the Independent Midwives Association of Namibia, and Cardiff University. And this collaboration has come around um, through a grant from the Welsh Government's Wales and Africa Fund, and we have a long-standing collaboration between Cardiff and Namibia. And it was identified that this midwifery leadership workshop would be really valuable for the midwives here. So we've worked to co-produce the workshop so that it is culturally appropriate for all the midwives here in Namibia. And the program has been really packed. Mm -hmm. Today, we've had some inspirational presentations um, from the Health and Care Professions Council of Namibia, mm -hmm. from the ICM, and also from the WHO. And we're having workshops about leadership styles and how midwives can build their confidence and their competence in midwifery leadership. And what's key to this is developing self-awareness so that midwives become more confident in their own abilities to lead a team and to see the vision for what needs changing in the service so that women and families have the best possible care and also respectful maternity care. And that is one of the key goals of this workshop as well, is to really embed the principles of respectful maternity care across the whole of the profession. Fashion. Very well. And while we're with you, Ms. Thomas, uh, research indicates that poor midwifery care quality contributes significantly to stillbirths and infant mortality. Now, what are the current statistics on this issue in the country? Um, in terms of the statistics in Namibia, I think that it would be good if Anna Lois speaks about that, because, of course, coming from Wales, we have a very different system. But um, I'll hand over to Anna Lois about that. But it's safe to say that I think the World Health Organization is very clear mm -hmm. that there is a role for midwives in preventing up to 80 percent 
of the maternal deaths and the stillbirths that happen and the neonatal deaths. In terms of the local statistics, let me hand over to my colleague now. Zero. Um, should I go ahead yeah, and yes, answer please that? Continue, please continue, Anlois. So, currently, we are at uh, 215 per 100,000 deaths, and our SDG goal is to be at 70 per 100,000 uh, deaths. So, of course, we are too far off uh, from our goal, but we have come a long way where we were at 350 before. So, that means that there is so much work that has been put. Of course, we still have like the three, the, the five H's that we need to consider that uh, the government and everybody has been putting uh, together to try and minimize this morbidity and mortality, which are also, which also include healthcare access, which I've mentioned that we are now at 94% access for people giving birth in our clinics or healthcare facility. Mm -hmm. But uh, we still having problems with, uh, with healthcare, healthcare service workers being experienced and um, access uh, to healthcare workers in terms of what type of experience do our midwives have, which is why this workshop is also quite important because we need to actually invest in our midwives for them to actually provide quality and respectful maternity care to our mothers and our babies. Very well. Going back to the workshop, Ms. Thomas, um, how does the workshop aim to address the prevailing trends and challenges in midwifery leadership? Ms. Thomas, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Thank you. Um, the workshop really seeks to address um, the trends that we're seeing globally in the State of the World's Midwifery Report that was launched by the WHO in 2021. And it shows in that report the evidence that is really clear that good midwifery leadership at all levels, that's from the ground level on a one-to-one -one basis with teams who work within hospitals, who, with teams who work within community settings, and also in education, but right the way through then to government level, we need to have really strong midwifery leadership because improving this will address the quality and safety of sexual, reproductive, maternal, newborn and adolescent health by midwives. So the key things that we're focusing on in this workshop are to address the challenges that we're facing mm -hmm. in a really compassionate way, to seek to mm -hmm. listen to the staff and to the women that we're caring for and to respond in a way that is respectful and develop projects that seek to change the systems in order that we can make things safer, make things better and give people a better experience of their maternity service because that also encourages them to come and to participate in the services as well. But it also seeks to retain staff. Mm -hmm. We know that shortages of staff globally are a problem and we need more midwives across Namibia as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. We need to be looking after our staff and leaders are the ones who can really look after and um, nurture their staff in providing the best possible care. You're right. In, 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 in contributing the most uh, possible and proper care in this in this in this uh, in this manner. Uh, what collaborative collaborative efforts are being implemented to enhance the leadership uh, in the field of midwifery, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Thomas? Well, the collaboration is really important, and this is collaboration not just locally and nationally, but globally. Mm. And um, as a WHO collaborating centre for midwifery development, we really focus on working at country level with other midwives. But it's not about us saying that we're experts, it's about really looking at what experts are there on the ground already in Namibia. And there are many, many fantastic midwifery leaders who are all coming together to move this forward. And the collaboration with Imana, with the University of Namibia and with Cardiff University has developed over several years. Mm. And we've been working together on several projects and this really helps us both to learn from one another yeah. so that we can move the agenda forward for midwifery at all levels. 
Right, um, Ms. Anna Lois, for me, I'm even context, what are, your, what are your thoughts on collaborative efforts that are being implemented uh, to enhance leadership in the field of midwifery? Um, so, as in MANA, we have been collaborating with um, UNFPA, with the World Health Organization, with UNAM, mm -hmm. uh, with private institutions, educational institutions, to actually contribute towards better guidelines, policies that have been put in place. We are also part of uh, the Healthcare Profession Council in regulation as well. So, we are actually using the pillars for the International Confederations of Midwives. These are six pillars where we want midwives to be affiliated in the political arena, in operational, in regulation, in education, and in research and clinical leadership. This collaboration will assist midwives to have a voice that we can better provide better maternity care services for our mothers. So with this support, we are able then to, to reduce, with the aim obviously of reducing mortality and morbidity for the mother and the baby during pregnancy and birth and postpartum. It has been very beneficial for Imana to do this. Uh, we met uh, Grace and Kerry, who are collaborating with us right now in uh, Bali earlier on in June, where we started thinking about this project, about leadership and how it can provide a better e equipment or just information for our leaders in Namibia. I tell you this, when we don't have great leaders, we are bound to actually have very poor health services in Namibia. But because we already have established good leaders, for instance, our Imana president, Yuma Shikwambi, who founded Imana in 2014, discovered that this is a need for midwives who did not have a voice in Namibia before that. Yes, they were present, but they did not have a voice to stand at international platforms where we are standing right now and learning and adopting evidence-based care for our mothers and our babies. So I think there is a, a place for midwives in Namibia, and this could be very helpful. So exactly what you're saying is that in Imana, it does extend its services to low-income areas, especially in Namibia. Yes, we do. So currently, we even, for our midwives that are in low-resource areas, we have, with COVID, it helped us a lot because now everybody, most people do have smartphones mm -hmm. or access to Zoom. So we actually train our midwives via Zoom, via um, WhatsApp, so that they can actually know what is currently happening. We have even delivered to them apps that we provided to us at the ICM, like the Safe Delivery app, where we just, where they have immediate reference and guidelines on how to treat emergencies, how to do drills, and also aim the CPD points that are required by the Healthcare Profession Council. So we are trying and we keep recruiting and we want our name to be known all over Namibia so that midwives know that they have support from other midwives via Imana. All right. Ms. Grace, uh, can, you, can we hear some final remarks from you uh, regarding the workshop and perhaps this topic? What, what's the duration uh, of this, of this uh, workshop and what can we expect? Uh, what are outcomes that can we expect from it? Absolutely. Well, we want to stress that these two days are not the end of this project. This is just the beginning. And what we want is for this collaboration to be a sustainable one, because all the participants in the workshop are encouraged to go away and to develop their own leadership project in the places that they work. We want them to take what they've learned from the workshop and share it with their colleagues so that we begin to cascade this information about leadership and how leadership can really affect the changes in service provision and can really make the care safer and of a better quality, as well as looking after the staff and valuing the staff. So the aim is that everyone will go away with an action plan so that they will deliver their own midwifery leadership project or workshop in their work areas. And then we're going to come back together and to evaluate this and hopefully gain some more funding. We're hoping that we'd be able to apply for more grants so that we can continue this collaboration together and help to support the fantastic work that is already going on in Namibia. And I feel very, very privileged. This is my fourth visit here now from Wales, from Cardiff University. And each time I see such progress in the care and the systems of delivery. And I feel very, very honoured that both myself and my colleague Kerry can be a part of sharing with the amazing colleagues we have here. And long may it continue because it is an excellent scheme of work. Very well. This is Grace Thomas, Miss Anna Lois Penduka. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.
you. All right, you are just joining us. You're watching the Daily Roundup. We'll take a short break and give you more after a short break.